Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, welcome back to the podcast. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Amps, uh, it, it's had a hell of a week. I don't know why I'm wearing headphones. <laughs> Sorry, man. All we've been doing are live streams, and uh, I need to be able to communicate. But uh, Amps had a hell of a week. Now, I would ask that you hold on to that feeling because you ain't seen nothing yet. More on that to uh, follow. And I'm not talking about the speculative uh, bumps, although those are fantastic earners for those who dabble in trading and speculating. Great way to grow your stack with other people's money. And if you ever get an opportunity to earn with zero risk, uh, just saying. The feeling that I'm talking about is a little bit more simple. It's watching the token that you have been holding on to for so long go up. That's why we invest, right? To make money. Changing the world is great. I'm a big fan. And if this is what drives you, you're in the right place at the right time. But if it is about money, you are definitely in the right place at the right time. And let me explain. The podcast has been branching out a bit lately. I, I sure hope that you noticed. Uh, there are a couple of projects that simply need a lot more visibility than they are getting. So in our very own small way, we're trying our best to bring them that visibility. But it's not out of simple altruism. <laughs> it's because of the potential in that market for AMP to truly th thrive. Allow me to explain. In the legacy world, with the exception of El Salvador right now, but I'm, you know what? More countries are going to come on board the Bitcoin train before too long. Cryptocurrency is not actually currency. It's crypto property. Doesn't mean you can't spend it. It's yours, and you can utilize it as you wish. But for most of the world, and particularly in the United States, it is not currency. Sorry about that. It is property, regardless of the name. This comes with very specific tax implications, and you ignore those implications at your own risk and to your own detriment. There is a lot of money here in the DeFi now, and you can bet that the IRS is watching. And when you start actively spending it, they are going to have some questions. I'm just saying. But there is a place where crypto is currency. Not only is it currency, but it is the only currency. They don't take fiat, and they don't want fiat. It's called the DeFi. Here, for goods and services you wish to purchase, there is only one form of payment, typically, and it's called crypto. It's easy enough to give you uh, one very specific example. Let's start with Ultramail. Fantastic product. I love them to death. I love what they are doing and what they are going to do. I wanted the product. But guess what? They don't take cash. They take crypto. Went to pay. Payment left my wallet, but Ultramail didn't receive it. I had to jump through hoops to get my access. It was an inconvenience. Uh, now, I thought that they were the exception, but it turns out that they are more or less the rule. Payments are difficult in the DeFi. So many chains, so many cryptos, so many elements that have to work together and work perfectly so you can buy your NFTs or pay for your email or your VPN or whatever goods or services you are looking for. If only there was a way to make this easier, something simple, something asset agnostic that doesn't care what kind of crypto goes in and doesn't care what kind of crypto comes out, something that is fraud proof, something that allows for instant merchant settlement, and a very important element, particularly with rising gas fees. Something with the fixed rate of 1%. Now, clearly, I'm talking about Flexa. All right. I mentioned the rise of the amp price because this does not have to be the exception. And it doesn't have to be five years from now. Amp gets its value from usage. It's right in the white paper. Page 9. So, let's put it to use. Altermail alone has needed processing for 25,000 subscribers, and they have just started. They haven't even advertised yet. These guys are going to 10x next year. It is a good product. 
Secret Network has some hangups on the settlement of their NFT sales. From time to purchase to time to pay, gas prices change and crypto values change. And this is a standard across the DeFi. It's not a secret network issue. It's a DeFi issue. Flexa solves all of this. One-stop shop, the perfect solution to a problem. And isn't that what crypto is for? Solving problems. The fact that investors can profit on it is just the icing on the cake. Amp needs steady growth, not speculative pumps. And the way they achieve it is by usage. So let's go where the usage is happening. Let's put to work the most easy to understand, ideally suited digital pay rail that mankind has ever devised. It's ready for you now. Ultramail is waiting for your call. The secret network is waiting for your call. The DeFi is waiting for your call. Just saying, give them a call. Let's get to work. I know as investors, one of our prime concerns is how much, how fast. Now, I don't do that here, and I never have. It's why we will remain a little niche channel. I don't tell you how much, but I do try and tell you how. This is how context matters. This is context. I am so excited about what's going to be coming your way. And I really wish that I could say all that I know, maybe by the end of the week. But I assure you that when I know for sure, you will know for sure. And you're going to hear it here at the podcast first. So that's it for today, folks. Lots of irons in the fire right now. And when they flesh out, you're going to know all about them. Until next time, please stay safe and please be smart with your money. That's it. Cheers.